Do, 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 do. Ah, nah, that's not quite right. It was actually after the, uh, you know, the Star Destroyer flying by, which is probably as dramatic a reveal as you're going to get for... This is probably one of the uh, most important molecules on the planet at the moment. This is actually the spike protein of the SARS coronavirus. Um... We had someone recently come give a talk about uh, research they were doing on, on these spike proteins. And it was sufficiently interesting that I thought I'd make a video on it. Um, I'm not an expert on spike proteins, but I, I kind of know my way around protein structures and all that sort of thing. So uh, for me, it was it was fascinating picking this guy's brains about these things. You know, so you'd ask these, these simple questions. So I, I, I'd looked into really quite hard like you know if i were to ask you how much coronavirus is there on the entire planet you know if i were to get it into put it into a pint mug or something how much would there be um y y these are actually far more complicated questions than you might think because you know when someone gets infected how much of the virus actually comes out of their body and um, a lot of these things they they're just not known um but one of the things that is known very well, and this is what he was doing his research on, is the spike proteins. Now, the software I'm using here to visualize this is called VMD, Visual Molecular Dynamics, I think, which is University of Illinois funded by the NIH. So, yeah, I mean, this is a free and fantastic software. And also free and fantastic is the protein data bank uh, where you, you can obviously download protein structures. Yeah, and so, I don't know how I actually managed to get this. Um, presumably, they, they crystallized it somehow. But um, anyway, yeah, so this is the structure of the SARS coronavirus spike glycoprotein, basically the spike protein. And, you know, when I first eyeballed this structure, you know, uh, when I first saw it in the talk, it looked... Actually, let's just put it on his band of vowels. Uh, when he had it in the talk, it looked something like this. Um, just give me a second. When he started in his talk, it looked like that. And my first question was, it's such an obvious question. Why are they wedge-shaped? And the answer was, no, no one really knows. You know, the, the the bit that's important is the bit on the outside here where it sticks to the outside of your cells. Um, why is it wedge shaped? It's it's not a space filling thing. It's not, yeah. There's there's plenty of room between this one and the next one. So why are they wedge shaped? Now I might have an answer for you uh, towards the end of the video. It's it's a little speculative, but it's it's well, reasonable speculative. Now, he also had some other fascinating things that he could tell us about these things, and that's that the spike proteins, let's get our spike protein back, they're all trimers, apparently, um, which is like, huh, that's a little weird, uh, which basically means they're not made up of one protein molecule, they're made up of three stuck together. So your hemoglobin uh, tetramers, I think, um, you know, it's four proteins stuck together, um, and the the spike proteins, they're, they're twos. And I want new cartoons, that'll do. There we go. And so if you actually put on those three molecules, um, like so, you actually get to see the, the three proteins and how they're all lovingly intertwined. And, you know, this is the bit that sits on the outside of the virus. The virus is down here. This is the bit that sticks on the, uh, the outside of your cells. And that that's not enough, it turns out. Uh, so, you know, the, the humans um, and all life, uh, it turns out, are basically, it's all surface chemistry. So, um, some huge amount of the stuff that happens in your body happens on these lipid bilayers. They, they, they make the, up the outside of your cells and there's loads of extra machinery in there in terms of proteins that stick through it and stuff that functionalize you know there's if you tot up the surface area of a human you know including all their cell walls and something 
it colossal. Uh, so, um, and these membranes, they're actually fairly impermeable uh, at room temperature. Sort of obviously so, otherwise you would just all dissolve into a pile of mush. They need to be fairly selective, these membranes. And they're an absolute pain in the ass to study, as you would expect. There's almost nothing of them. They're a very thin layer. Um, anyway, so what happens is your virus is going to come along and it's going to stick to one of the proteins on the surface there. And that's the bit that this guy was studying, is you know the structure of this protein and you can do some calculations and experiments to work out you know if you were to get mutations on these the binding domain uh what are the ones that are likely to make it bind much more strongly and so they'd actually done a load of studies like this and worked out before it came out uh, before it evolved naturally um that the um, yeah, what would be the likely uh, things that would make the virus more prolific uh, or, or bind more strongly to humans? And so they, they, they basically predicted the mutation, to, the, the critical mutation to you get in, in Omicron. So it, it turns out, you know, the, the, there's only a relatively small bit on the top here that binds to the surface of your cells. And so it's only... Um, let's get rid of these and put it on as eh, Van der Waals. Yeah, let's put it on as bonds or something. Uh, so, no, 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 no. Too many representations, not lines, bonds. There we go. Um, so it's all made up of proteins, uh, these things. So there are amino acids. A load of amino acids stuck together. So there's, there's basically three really long fairly identical chains here and what makes all the proteins unique is they have side chains on them so this one's a phenylalanine this one's a tyrosine uh, after, after, after a while of looking at oh, he's got quite a lot of aromatics in this one on the surface uh which is a little weird um anyway yeah so there'll there'll be a little group around here where you know, the, these are things that are likely to make the, the protein bind more or less strongly to something. And they, they made some predictions, you know, that this, the, this, this, and this mutation would make it bind 100 times more strongly to the outside of your cells. Turns out yeah, this is only a bit player in working out whether a virus is going to be prolific or not. Um, the, the amount that is understood between, um, you, you know, let, let, let me just give you an example. Let's just say that you get a mutation on the surface of your spike protein and it makes it a million times stronger binding to uh, this, the outside of your cells. If that mutation also means that it doesn't sort of nebulize and come out of infected people, it just sticks in their lungs and never comes out, the, the fact that it binds more strongly is almost irrelevant. And, you know, when you come to those very simple questions, like, you know, how much of, how, how does a virus get out of someone's body? These are still really poorly understood things. Um, so, you, you know, it, it's the best that you can do is make the predictions of what is likely to bind to the outside of your cells better. Um but it's still really quite limited. Anyway, so um, what I was about to tell you um, is if we go back to the the sort of wireframe structure, no, the, the the cartoon type structure, uh, proteins tend to go into two general types of form. Uh, you get alpha helices like this, where it's uh, yeah. The, the, so this is one of the the protein chains is all going up in a curl and then it'll go around in bends and all sorts of other stuff later or the other ones you get is beta sheets like this and the thing that you know it was only when i eyeballed the structure like this that it's like uh yeah i can see it immediately that you see all these alpha helices stuck in the middle of this thing you know what that reminds me of that looks almost exactly 
like a um, transmembrane domain. So you'll recall that um, you you have these lipid bilayers. The yeah, they're, they're the outside of all of your cells. And there are proteins that go through them like that. Well, what do those proteins look like in crystal structures? They look almost exactly like that bit, which is basically, it's the stalk of the um, uh, the the spike protein. And so, you know, the bit on the top here binds to your cells. And then th this you did tell me, right? is that the even for the virus to get into your cells it can't do it on its own it needs the help of other proteins that are drifting around on the surface here to get in so uh, an enzyme comes along and it cleaves a bit of the spike protein it cleaves a serine i think and he said that yeah then uh, i i didn't realize um he, then he said there is actually a bit inside there that, that penetrates the cell. And it was only when I took a look at the crystal structure and it's like, yeah, that bit in the middle there is basically the bit that goes into your cell and penetrates the cell and then allows uh, fusion of, of, the, of the two membranes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I found that absolutely fascinating and there are other things that uh, are very characteristic of um, you know these transmembrane proteins so the, the, the first thing is the, the length of them that's almost exactly the length or the the, the size of the lipid bilayer but also as bizarre as it might sound charged amino acids uh, especially positively charged amino acids like um lysine and arginine are usually found an awful lot in uh these these proteins that penetrate um membranes and so bee sting it turns out melatonin um is which i actually worked on it it's like four of these alpha helices and there's a load of positively charged amino acids on one bit so this is another thing that is if you're looking for something that wants to go through a membrane that's what they look like. So we can actually put those on here. Let's put on these are at the or the um, arginine and lysine amino acids. And what what's absolutely awesome is if you actually fly through here. Um, there's a bit. There we go. That's him. Um, and center me up. So that's four arginines there three arginines all stuck together these are all of these are positive amino acids right so there's something helping them overcome the coulomb barrier there there's probably a metal ion or something i would guess but um and then on the other side you've got three lysines all stuck together uh, yeah i mean this, this this really is um it, it kind of screams uh cell penetrating peptide at you that's an awful lot of positively charged amino acids as well um yeah there'll be loads of negative ones here as well this thing will be very close to electro neutral um if you tot everything up but there's one other thing that's um um usually characteristic about these uh alpha helices that go through membranes and that's that uh let's, let's get rid of those and let's put on the aromatics you usually get aromatics at the the top and bottom of the alpha helices but not in the middle and the one thing that's you know very very clear here is there's this huge band in the middle where there are no aromatics which is you know you, this one's tyrosine this one's phenylalanine and for some reason it's a histidine okay um but yeah uh so i thought yeah let's, let's do a video on the face of the enemy uh the sars coronavirus spike protein um which you can download yourself and take a look at uh the the software like i was saying is free it takes a little time to get used to the controls like you know you can have 
it is cartoon representations or van der Waals. And rather than having it all as one color, we can color them by name. And if you, if that's no good for you, uh, licorice or, or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, drop a thumbs up on it. And I will see you next time.